Hello everyone and welcome to the best game Anish Giri has ever seen. Uh, this might be an exaggeration, but it is a really good game. It's from round five of the Rapid uh, and Blitz tournament that is currently being played in Paris, and it's uh, between Levon Aronian and uh, Yanni Pomnichi. So uh, Nepo, the the current uh, challenger to Magnus Carlsen, uh, faces a former 2800 player in a in a, in a most brutal game. Uh, so without further ado, let's check it out as this game is really really something else. So Nepo with the white pieces opens with c4 we have knight to f6 by levon knight to f3 and now e6 we have g3 uh d5 striking in the center and bishop to g2 so going for the neo catalan setup uh we have d captures on c4 uh, and now white reclaims the pawn we have queen captures on a4 with check uh knight blocks uh sorry not knight bishop blocks and now attacks the queen and queen captures on c4 uh, we have c5 uh, uh, going for that uh, central control right away and the knight to e5 now. And this makes it a bit uh, problematic for black to develop. If you play some like knight to c6, we can start trading here right away. Captures, 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 and then double black spawns here. So it could be, could be good for white. You know, once you develop your pieces, get the rook to c1, you're going to have a lot of pressure here. Uh, uh, towards these pawns. So after knight to e5, we have queen to c8 by Levon, uh, and now comes b3. And b3 is already um, a rare move. Queen to d3 is what's usually played here, uh, but b3, as you'll see, has its merits. So here, knight to c6, attacking the knight here, and now Nepo eliminates uh, one of uh, e, uh, one of Levon's uh, bishops. So knight captures on d7, uh, queen captures on d7, and now bishop to b2. Uh, developing the bishop to this long diagonal, we have bishop to e7, and now uh, Nepo castles. We have rook to c8, so nicely continuing development, and now rook to d1. Uh, white wants to uh, continue developing his queen side, but for the moment, if the knight moves, the d2 pawn hangs, so you have to defend it first. So first, rook to d1, and now there is one game where knight to d4 was played, but here alone plays castles, and it is now as of move 12 that we have a completely new game. So let's see how the game continues. We have knight to c3. Nepo, of course, just continues development. And now a6. Uh, if Levon uh, wasn't playing in his usual style, he might even play something like queen to d4 and try to go for some sort of a queen trade. Uh, and then, for example, if rook a to c1, captures, captures. And while, while this maybe is playable, it's definitely not the kind of chess uh, Levon plays. So he just keeps the tension on the board. He plays a6. He wants to play b5, continue expanding on the queen side. Uh, kick away Nepo's queen and then uh, good things might happen. So here rook a to c1, white finishes development and now b5. So the queen is under attack, queen to f4 and now we have h6. Uh, we have d3 and now comes rook f to d8. And with this move black kind of also uh, finishes his development and now queen goes back to d2. So queen to d2, you want to advance this pawn and you need uh, additional protection for your for your pawn here. So here uh, we have queen to a7 and now comes e3. And here queen to b6 by Levon. So a lot of a lot of maneuvering with the queen. Uh, you want to get your queen away from the d file. So queen to e2 and now comes knight to b4. And okay, the knight is uh, quite annoying here. It's attacking the d3 pawn. It's attacking the a2 pawn. Uh, but what it's really doing is uh, remaneuvering itself to d5 so here uh, Nepo kicks it away he plays a3 and now knight b to d5 uh, we have trades, knight captures, captures, and now d4. And what do you play here? Uh, well, it's a, it's a really uh, uh, interesting position because black might even consider playing a move like c4 here. This did not happen in the game. In the game, uh, Levon just uh, shifted the knight back to f6, but c4 is very, very interesting. Uh, problem is, even though white is attacking this pawn three times, you can't really capture because if, uh, if captures, captures, and captures, what's defending the bishop here? Yes, the queen, but... Uh, if rook captures and c4, you, you're, you you know, in a, in a world of pain. For example, captures, captures, you've lost a piece and you, you lose the game. So instead, after d4, Levon just goes back, knight to f6, and now comes d captures and c5. We have rook captures on d1, rook captures on d1, and the bishop captures on c5. And now the position is... Um, uh, well, very interesting, and uh, white basically has to make a decision whether to capture this knight or not. So on the plus side, you are ruining his king side. Uh, on the downside, you are giving away a an incredible piece here. This bishop is just a monster. So uh, maybe if you can uh, do it uh, some other way, maybe you don't want to give it away, but... Uh, 
uh, Nepo doesn't find any any better moves. There is, uh, for example, the very interesting queen to c2 uh, because the rook here is undefended and you are now threatening b4 uh, to, well, attack the bishop so the bishop will not be able to move. Uh, but if queen to b8, rook to c1, again, now both queen and the rook will be attacking the c8 square. We can play this rook to c7 move and black kind of solves uh, all of his problems. If b4, or bishop to d6 and then uh, you you are out of the woods. So instead, after bishop captures on c5, we have bishop captures on f6. Nepo uh, eliminates this knight. We have g captures, and then now comes queen to h5, going after this h6 pawn. And uh, even though it seems like you can defend it with your king, you you really can't. If king here, then queen captures on f7, and if king to g7, it's not much better. Rook d7 just wins the game. It doesn't seem like it wins the game, but after rook to f8, you have this queen to g4 check, king to h7, and now b4. This b4 incredible move uh, just, uh, you know, throughout the entire game. Uh, there, there's no square for this bishop. You can't go here. You can't go here. You can go here, but it's not going to do you uh, much good because queen captures on e6. Now the queen doesn't cover e6 and also this spin, so you can't capture, uh, capture here. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, somehow I reversed uh, reverse this. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, few moves. Oh, all right. Uh, so after queen to h5, uh, king to g7 uh, cannot be played uh, also because after rook to d7, now attacking this pawn, rook to f8, now we play this queen to g4 check. And now king to h7, b4, like we've mentioned. And now... Uh, you will have to play something like f5, uh, but f5 is, again, uh, it doesn't do all that much uh, uh, good for white because now you can simply play queen to f4, and now you take away this square from the bishop as well. And now black is just uh, lo losing a piece. So instead, after queen to h5, uh, Levon played bishop captures on a3. If you can grab this pawn and get away with it, sure, it's a great move, but if you can't, uh, then it's a problem. And you really can't grab it. Uh, but there, there really is no no better move. Uh, you, you should play something like bishop to e7. But it's incredibly difficult to see why. Uh, the thing is, after rook to d7, the point of this bishop being here is that the rook and queen are not connected now. And you can play this rook to c7 move. So this is the, uh, you know, the... Uh, the, the Zeroda defense, as they are calling it now uh, online, for, for certain certain reasons. Uh, but after queen to h5, bishop captures on a3 was played, and now rook to d7 is incredible. Rook to d7 just attacks the f7 pawn. So here, Levon defends it with rook to f8, but now comes a move that it's very, very hard to spot. Uh, so feel free to pause the video here and try to find this uh, incredible idea while, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations. If you found this, then uh, you are much, much stronger than you think you are. Because once you see this, you can never unsee it. Uh, it's such a such a crazy move. It's the only move that wins the game. And in this, played, uh, in this position, Nepo played bishop to e4. And the threat behind bishop to e4 is a simple one. We're just going to play captures and checkmate. So how can black defend this? Uh, uh, well, truth is, uh, black cannot defend this. Uh, black played f five here but uh, this will not do because Nepo just played queen captures on h6 and this is like what what if <laughs> what if the bishop is captured how can you uh, how can you defend this well uh, capturing the bishop is an easy way out for white I will show you a sturdier defense that also doesn't work but it it kind of improves uh, black's position a lot for example you could play queen to c5 ignore this bishop and now we get this queen g5 check king to h8 Queen to f6 check, king to g8, and now bishop back to f3. With the idea of bishop h5 just going after this f7 pawn, uh, there's no way for black to defend it. So black would have to play f5 to keep an eye on the h5 square. We're just going to eliminate this pawn. And now we're simply up material and black's position is, is just terrible. Uh, so here we might see bishop to b2 to try and avoid any checkmate threats. The bishop can now go back here, but rook to c7 now. Attacks the queen and after let's say queen f5, we can simply trade here and that's it. We're we're simply uh, in, in a, we're up a pawn, but our position is completely winning here. Uh, there's not much black can do here. So this is with absolute perfect play uh, how the game might... Um, 
uh, you know, uh, evolve. But in the game, after queen captures on f6, uh, Levon captured the bishop and now comes the move that Nepo had to see when he played bishop to e4 and this is one of those moves that like I said once you see it you can never unsee it and after I show it to you now uh, you will see it in all of your games and you will achieve great victories for the rest of your life uh, here uh, Nepo played rook to d5 and now, now that you see it, of course, it all makes sense. The pawn cannot capture because the queen is hanging. And if the pawn doesn't capture, this is checkmate. And that's it. There's simply no way, no way to play this. But seeing this from the position where bishop to e4 was played, and I'm pretty sure that Nepo saw it much, much uh, before that, even before bishop to e4 was on the board. Um, I mean, if, if, if you're about to challenge Magnus Carlsen for the title of world champion, you have to know such. Uh, this is considered a simple idea uh, on their level. Uh, but now there's nothing here. Levon can just resign the game, but he continues with queen captures on e3. Now, of course, if... Uh... Uh, well, there, there's not uh, much you can do here. And I know you guys are wondering, but what about f6? It doesn't help. Just queen g6 check, king h8 and queen to uh, uh, rook to h5 will be checkmate. So in the game, queen captures on e3 was played, but it doesn't help. Uh, Nepo happily captures the queen. We have e captures on d5. Now Levon has a bishop and the rook for the queen, but uh, it's very all very, very discoordinated and the white queen is simply too powerful. Queen g5 check. King to h8. We start grabbing material. Queen captures on d5. We have f5 defending this pawn, but now the black king is completely... Uh, out in the open uh, here queen to d4 with check with king to g8 and now even b4 so twice this b4 move causes a lot of problems for black now there's nothing you can do uh, to uh, activate this piece bishop to c1 is played but again it doesn't help queen to b6 now you're going to eliminate all of these pawns and then you're going to advance this pawn to a new queen so rook to f7 and now queen captures an a6 we have e3 now trying to do some damage uh, but just queen to c8 check and it was in this position on move 38 that uh, levon Arignan resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here once the king moves we're going to win the bishop here and that's it let's say king g7 queen captures here and there is there is no play this it's um, uh, of course uh, you know it, it would be pointless to continue this so like I said incredible incredible game and uh, I would be very interested uh, uh, in hearing from Nepo at what point did he find Bishop the e4 so it could have been uh, maybe even in the position where he was deciding on this, uh, it, it's, it's really very hard to say. Maybe even at the D captures on C5, uh, because uh, from, from this point on, maybe even uh, when he played D4, because it's pretty much forced. Knight F6, captures, 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 and now this bishop captures on F6, uh, G captures, and now queen to H5 with the preparation of bishop to E4. So if you don't see bishop to E7, the defense that we discussed, uh, this is just crushing. So incredible stuff and uh, Magnus will have his uh, hands full when when November finally comes. But we'll we'll see how it goes. Uh, as usual, do let me know uh, what are your predictions for the match in November in the uh, comment section below. So yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Levon uh, definitely hasn't, but uh, that's what happens when you face such a such a fierce player like Yanni Pomnishi. And uh, do join us in the tournament today. It starts at 8 p.m. Central European time. All the info will be in the description below. Uh, and we're going to have a lot of time. I'm going to be streaming it to showcase all of your great games that you guys will be playing. It will be. It will last for some two hours. And hope we have a, 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 a good time. So, yeah, once again, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Purna Suja Cherikuri, uh, Abina Vishak Yapan, uh, Atul Dingra, Michael Castaño, and David Kimura for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Morphe Saga, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, and whatever else happens in the chess world. So, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.